If done incorrectly, water in a terrarium can result in it looking like this. In this video, you'll learn everything there is to know about water in terrariums, so yours should look a little like this. I'll be covering everything from water in new and old terrariums, how often to do so, and even how to fix an overwatered terrarium. Be sure to make it to the end, as this video is packed with value. Let's start with how to water a new terrarium. I just made this terrarium and haven't watered it yet for the purpose of this video. It's extremely simple, but it will work as an example. What I'm going to do is look at the substrate. As it hasn't been watered yet, it's relatively dry. What we want is the substrate to be damp, but not wet or soggy. To water the terrarium, I'm going to be using this fine mist spray bottle. In my opinion, this is the best tool to use for watering. Another good option is a pipette, as you can easily control the amount of water going inside. As I mentioned earlier, we want the substrate to be damp. This is an example of a terrarium with a wet and saturated substrate, which is definitely not what we want and it's the reason it died. A quick point I should add is that this terrarium did not die because it doesn't have a drainage layer. Super healthy, long lasting terrariums can be made without a drainage layer, so long as the terrariums are small. Their small size make it unbelievably easy to regulate the perfect amount of water in the substrate, making a drainage layer unnecessary. In larger terrariums, a drainage layer is very effective and should definitely be used. But in smaller ones, it can often be misleading and lead to a false sense of security. The drainage layer can be empty and free from water, but yet the terrarium can still be overwatered and die. Here's an example of a terrarium with a drainage layer, but it's still very much overwatered. I'll be showing you how I fixed this overwatered terrarium later on in this video. With that out of the way, let's get back to water in this newly made terrarium. I used a spray bottle to give it several light sprays of water. I stopped spraying before I think the terrarium's got enough water. It still looks relatively dry, but a lot of water is on the glass and in the moss, and it will make its way down to the substrate. So what I'm going to do now is leave it there and close the terrarium for 24 hours. 24 hours have passed. When looking at the substrate now, you can see that it's damp and at the perfect moisture level it should be. Although I thought I underwatered it yesterday, it turned out to be the perfect amount. If it did need more water, I would give it a few more light sprays with the spray bottle, close it up and then check it again tomorrow. Another leading factor that can impact the amount of water you need to give your terrarium is the substrate. If your substrate mix is extremely dry, you will need to give your terrarium more water. And if it's very damp, you will need less. I like to keep mine on the drier side. Here's a mature terrarium that I made a few months back. I'm going to show you how I go about watering it. Firstly, I determine whether it needs water at all. When filling the moss, it does feel pretty dry. And when looking at the substrate, it's also looking drier than I would like. This means this terrarium needs to be watered. Once again, I'm gonna take the small spray bottle and give it a few light sprays. Keep in mind that a mature terrarium will likely need less water than a newly made one. Once again, I stop before I think there's enough and then check the substrate a day later. If it requires more, I'll add so accordingly, but this one ended up perfect. This is a terrarium that has completely dried out due to lack of watering. This is obviously not ideal and should be avoided. It's a good idea to check up on your terrarium's health every couple weeks and determine if it needs to be watered. It likely won't, but it's good practice to check. It goes without saying that if it doesn't need water, don't water it. Here's a visual comparison of a terrarium that's been overwatered and one that has the perfect amount. As you can see, the difference is clear. And for another reference, here's the underwatered terrarium. You're probably wondering how often you should be watering your terrarium. Unfortunately, I can't give you an exact answer as every single terrarium is different. This one, for instance, has an acrylic lid, which means it's not airtight. This means it will need to be watered more frequently than something like this terrarium here, which has a gasket and will provide a 100% airtight seal. Terrariums like this very rarely need to be watered as no water can evaporate and escape the jar due to the airtight seal. In my experience, terrariums with cork lids do not provide a complete airtight seal and should therefore be watered more frequently. This terrarium is about a year old and I water it every three months or so. Also, I just noticed this terrarium has a tiny mushroom growing inside, which is a great sign that the terrarium is healthy. As I mentioned, water in frequency will vary from every single terrarium. This terrarium here, which has an airtight seal, likely won't need to be watered for at least a year. Whereas this one, I water it every two to three months due to the lid which is not airtight. Another key factor is the moss and plants that you have used. Faster growing species of moss and plants will use up more of the available water to grow. 
This means watering will be a little more frequent compared to an identical terrarium with slow growing plants. The best thing to do is check up on your terrarium every two to three weeks and note down how it's doing. Note down how the substrate's doing. Does it appear damp or does it look like it's beginning to dry out? Note down whether the glass has any condensation on it. If it has none at all, it may be a sign that it needs to be watered soon. Also look at the moss and plants. The moss should not look like it's drying up and if it is, it may be a sign that the terrarium needs to be watered. Writing all this down will give you a catalogue of information to look back on and will help you accurately determine when the terrarium needs to be watered and to better learn its watering routines. Taking pictures to look back on can also be super helpful. If you're finding this video useful, you might be interested in checking out my ebook. It contains everything you need to know to make and keep long lasting healthy terrariums. From the best substrate mix to use, 25 of the best mosses and plants to use, what microfauna to introduce, how to care for your terrarium and everything in between. If you're interested, I'll leave it at the top of the description and in the pinned comment. Now as promised earlier, I'm going to show you how to fix this overwatered terrarium. It's very important to address an overwatered terrarium as quickly as you can. As left as it is, its days are numbered. If the terrarium begins to smell or its moss starts to turn brown, it may already be too late. I'm going to start by taking some tissue and wiping off the condensation from the inside of the terrarium. This is a great and easy way of removing water from the terrarium's ecosystem. With the condensation removed, I'm now going to leave the terrarium open for one to two hours. This will allow water to evaporate from the terrarium. After a couple hours, I take the terrarium, place the lid back on and monitor it for about 12 hours or so. If the problem remains, repeat the process again. As you can see, 12 hours later, this is looking slightly better, but it still contains too much water. I'll once again remove the condensation and leave it to sit for a couple hours so some more water can evaporate. And then close it up, monitor and repeat if necessary. Here's how it's looking after I went through the process several times. As you can see, the substrate is now looking damp, which is ideal. And this overwatered terrarium has been fixed. I can't talk about water and terrariums without talking about what types of water we should be using. Regular tap water should be avoided as it contains harmful chemicals such as chlorine that will do no favours for the terrarium's health. Instead, use one of the following. Dechlorinated tap water, rain water, bottled water, RO water, distilled water or filtered tap water. These are much better options to use and your terrarium will definitely be thankful for it. If you're on a budget and don't want to be spending money on dechlorinator or extra water in general, you can simply fill a container with water, leave it out for a few days so the chlorine evaporates, and then it's good to use. Thanks for watching this video and I really hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. Now check out this video for six must-know tips for making and keeping healthy terrariums.